At this time, I'm going to ask Anthony Whitney and the family to come forward. And um, we rejoice today with Anthony and Whitney because of this wonderful little girl, Serenity, that is coming to their hearts and their home. Even as Joseph and Mary brought the child Jesus to the temple to present him to God, it is important that uh, we today present our children to the Lord publicly and recognize that they are included in God's wonderful plan and the fellowship through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so Pastor Dan's going to come and read, he's going to read some scripture for us. In the Old Testament, God made a covenant, covenant with his people saying, these commandments that I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And in the New Testament, Mark recorded that people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. It is therefore our privilege to present our children to the Lord and our duty to raise them in his ways. Anthony and Whitney now bring serenity to offer her in dedication and pledge in the presence of this congregation to bring her up in the Lord's love, discipline, and instruction. And as a part of God's family, we also have a part in the upbringing and future of Serenity's life. To live a Christian life before her and all the children in our midst and to be an example and to encourage the parents and to lift them up in prayer. Anthony and Whitney, the birth of a child is a precious and enriching gift to the home and family life. And this wonderful gift also comes with great responsibility to you as parents. For into your care is entrusted an everlasting soul whose character is greatly influenced by the parents and the home. It is your duty to see that serenity is taught as soon as she is able to understand in her own mind that she must give her heart to the Lord and to study God's word and to keep it in her heart. It is important that she be taught to love, reverence, respect, and worship our Lord. Do you, Anthony and Whitney, in the sight of God and the presence of these witnesses, solemnly covet with God to bring serenity in the fear and admiration of the Lord? Do you covet together to strive to bring serenity in the knowledge of his holy scriptures and to lead her, in, her into the acceptance of Jesus Christ as her personal Savior? If so, answer, we do. I'm going to ask at this time that grandparents and great parent, great great grandparents come forward, and we're going to have a prayer time, and uh, I'm going to hold Trinity for just a minute, <laughs> and uh, oh, she's precious, isn't she? Say hi. Jesus publicly said. Uh, let the children come unto me. And in fact, he even said, unless you become like a little child, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. And he took children, and he, uh, in fact, the disciples tried to shoo children away. People tried to shoo them away, but he said, no, let them come to me. And he would lay hands and pray, pray them, pray over them. And so we're going to do that. And then I'm, I'm going to say a prayer. And then, Anthony, you, as the head of your home, say a prayer over your family and serenity. So let's start this. Let's, would you bow with me for prayer? Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this little gift of life that you've given to Anthony and Whitney and to us. And uh, Lord, I pray for us as a church family that we would do our best to live the life before her. And I pray, Father, your blessing and anointing over her life and that she would be used mightily for you. And uh, thank you for her life. And I pray that she will follow you all the days of her life. And uh, thank you for this family. In Jesus' name, amen.
you for being with us. Thank you for sharing. And, uh, so I want to pray for the man that overheard this. Um, to be full of um, real peace in her, in her life. And uh, the male name, too, faith. To be full of faith. And, and uh, that, uh, that just a blessing over her. That she would grow up to be a godly woman. Uh, who follows hard after you, King Jesus. And, uh, I do pray for as a family as we do our part in raising her and teaching her and sharing your word um, in her that, that we would do our part, that we would be faithful, um, that we would be godly and good and to her. And uh, Lord, we thank you for the blessing that she is, but we also um, thank you for the responsibility um, to, to pass on this, this legacy of heritage of, of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Blessings on you. <laughs> I'm going to share a little bit of a few funny things before I get into the message. Um, uh, I thought this was cute. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and uh, uh, can anyone tell me what this, uh, what him, what this chorus is, this song? Anybody? Oh, Little Town of Bethlehem. By the way, Pastor Dan gave me these, so okay. Um, what about this one? Away in the manger. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's something there, isn't it? You got, oh, holy night. Oh, what child is this? Okay. Oh, come all you faithful. Some of you are getting into this really too, too much. This is, okay. This is one of my points in my sermon that uh, one of the signs of those who are following Christ, there should be joy in our hearts. And, uh, and so uh, it's, um, we're going to, you know, I'm going to get ahead of my sermon here, but I, I do think there's something about as well as believers, even though we go through even storms of life, we should have a joy. It doesn't mean that we enjoy the storms of life, do we? But we have a joy. So joy to the world. So I did, this was funny, I thought. Okay, they will just think Pastor Anthony ate them. So I had to put that in there for fun. Okay, that last one. Okay. Well, let me get into the message now. I want to get serious here. But, um, you know, uh, Christmas is a time that I, I was praying a few years ago. And uh, the last several years, I've titled my message... The, the real Christmas story because it seems like in the world we live in, people don't even, we celebrate and we say Merry Christmas, but many, many people don't know what it's about and, and, and all the, the reasons why Christ came. And yes, he died on the cross. He was a sacrifice, but he came to give us life here on earth too, but also for eternity. And so, and to understand that our sins are forgiven. So we're going to look at some of those things today and my prayer is that today this will make a difference in your heart and your life and you'll understand the, the real true meaning of Christmas. And so if you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 18 through 25? During our Christmas year, a tradition that we have, our family has, is that we read the Christmas story before we open any gifts. Because we wanted to teach our kids it's not about the gifts. It's about the gift of our Savior who has been born. And uh, so I would just encourage you to, to do that. If you don't know where all the scriptures are, uh, come to me. I have a sheet that I print out, and we, we, uh, we pass it around. We read it before we open our, our gifts. So we remember the real reason, the true reason for, for Christmas. And so let me read this for you. It's in Matthew 
Um, this is just one segment of the Christmas story. There's like four passages that describe Christ's birth. But we're just going to look at this main one today. But in verse 18, it says this. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. The word pledge there, just so you know, it was actually a contract that you were actually married, but you had not come together yet. Okay? So um, she was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, He did not want to expose her to public disgrace. So he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. That's the prophet Isaiah. If you go to Isaiah 7.14, it says this in the Old Testament. The virgin will be with child. It will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph had woke up from this dream, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and gave him the name Jesus. Would you bow with me for prayer? Father in heaven, I I thank you for the real, true Christmas story. Thank you for our Savior, the Messiah, who was born, who takes away the sins of our lives. Every one of us have sinned. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. And Lord, I pray as I speak that it won't be about what I say. It's about what you say and how you speak to our hearts through your word here this morning. Lord, I thank you for each each family that's represented here and each person. And may this Christmas be a special Christmas, but may it be not just about Christmas. May it be every day of our lives we'll know, Emmanuel, that God is with us. That's why you came, because you loved us that much. So we thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Christ's name I pray, amen. As I was praying uh, about this message, I, I tried to take uh, time and pray. I just don't try to pick a passage and say, okay, let's just make this a nice sermon. I, I pray. I pray for you. I pray for myself that I would hear from the Lord. And, and specifically, this verse is what came to my mind, so I decided to preach from this passage. So that's how that came about. But the specific verse that came, the, the part of it was Emmanuel which means God is with us, is what I, when I was praying. That I, when I pray about sermons, a lot of times I'll say, Lord, what do you want us, your people, to hear? And then what do you want us to do about this? Because if we just come and we hear this message and it doesn't make a difference in our lives, we're wasting our time. And in your time, I encourage you to read God's Word at home because it'll speak to you. God's Word will speak to you and pray. But so as I was I was. Praying about this, the specific part of of verse 23 there is the Lord really wants us to know that this Jesus, which is Yahshua, we're going to get into this a little bit, Joshua, in in the English it's Jesus, is he was called Emmanuel. And people would see Jesus and say, wow, God is with us. God is truly here. And my prayer for you is that you realize that when you receive the Lord and you walk with the Lord, that God is truly with you. You're not alone. He loves you. But you have a choice. I have a choice. When I understood this and I started believing in Christ and I said, Lord, would you fill me with your Holy Spirit? 
that there was just something that I knew that the Lord was with me. And it, my whole life changed back in 1979. My life changed. It wasn't that I was perfect. I was close. No, I wasn't close. <laughs> I was way far from perfect. But there was a sense of peace that I didn't have. I had a lot of fear. And partly it was because I grew up in a very dysfunctional home. Okay? But even at that, you need to understand, the Lord came to bring us peace in our hearts, in our lives. And so I pray that this message, as we look through the Scripture, specifically when you, when you understand this, and uh, y- your life will be changed. You know, Jesus came to this earth, and he said, I am here, but I must go. He must go to the cross, but he said, I must go to the Father. It's better for me. It's, aren't you glad that Jesus didn't stay here? He died for your sins. But he went to the Father, but he said, I must go because I will send the Holy Spirit. Because he was in a human body. So we believe in God the Father. Is that right? We believe in the Son, Jesus. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. God the Father, the Son. I didn't understand this. I heard about it. I said the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> But I didn't understand that that's God. And Jesus sent, he went to the Father and said, oh, we will send you our spirit to be with you. And so that's in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit came. It says it descended on God's people, and it says that they were changed. When I decided to believe in Christ, I prayed this prayer, and I started seeking God. And I, all I can tell you is my, my life changed. And he's still filling me because I tend to leak. You know, I tend to leak, and I need a refilling because I get stressed out. Anybody get stressed out? Especially Christmas. It's not supposed to be that way. I was thinking about that. Uh, Today was sort of stressful for me this morning because all things that are going on, I'm thinking, I was praying back there before I got up here, and I said, Lord, let it not be that way in my heart. I want to enjoy this time of the year. I want to enjoy life. In my flesh, I get stressed out. So here we go here. I want to, the first point, I have, you, there should be an outline in your bulletin there. And I'm encouraged you to take this home and, and, um, and uh, go over it. But uh, your, the first point I want to make is when you have Emmanuel, God, with you, and you experience him, There's going to be the absence of revenge in the presence of what? Righteousness. Now you think of that. Why would you, Pastor Ray, put this on there? Well, when I became a follower in Christ and started, God started working in my heart. My attitude before that, because of the way I grew up, was I wanted to get back at people. When someone hurt me, guess what I wanted to do? I wanted to get revenge. I wanted to get back at then. But I want you to see something maybe you haven't, you didn't see. But see, um, in this, this verse there, it says about the birth of Christ. Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be a child through the Holy Spirit. Uh, so Joseph somehow found out that she was pregnant, and he knew he hadn't been with her. And so he, it says because he was, look at that word, a righteous man. A righteous man means he, he wanted to live right with God, and he wanted to do the right thing. Okay? By the way, I don't know if you know, but all of us inside know this. God says he's put in everyone's heart and mind the law. Romans says we're all without excuse. Okay? You and I know what's right from wrong. Deep in our hearts. Now, I've done wrong, lots of wrong. Ask my wife. (laughs) Lots of sins. But in my heart, if I got in a little bit of argument or yell or something, I knew that was wrong. And as I start to to allow the Lord to to work in my heart, those kind of attitudes will start changing. And that's what this whole sermon is about. When you have the Lord in your life and you're asking, you want to follow Christ, you're going to be like Christ. That's your whole goal. You want to be like him. And so look at, he was a righteous man. So in his mind, he was going to divorce her uh, quietly, it says here. But he didn't want to expose her her public, uh, public disgrace. Now, before as a Christian, let me tell you, I wanted to do that. 
I wanted everybody to know that so-and-so hurt me. And, and that's the sinful nature. Okay? But he wasn't that kind of man. God had already been working in his heart. And so he was going to divorce her quietly. But look what happened. He, he has that dream. Okay? And so, um, so that, let me, before I go on here, this is when I want to encourage you. Some of you, you have some areas in your heart that maybe someone's hurt you or you want to get revenge on someone. And the Lord says, no, I don't want you to do that. Let me take care of that. And there might be some of you thinking, yeah, there's probably an area in my heart that I've been really hurt bad. I just want to get back. But the Lord said, revenge is mine, saith the Lord. Don't put it in your own hands. In fact, the people that have hurt me the most, I've, I've battled this. I've had, we've all had hurts. I don't, probably none of us. Listen, if you, if, especially younger people, if you hadn't had any hurts yet, you probably will. You will have hurts. Okay? Can, let me say this. Someone said this just recently. You know when Jesus gave the Sermon on the Mount and he said, your, your life is like building a house. You either build that house on a rock or on sand. You know what I'm talking about? And he says, when the storms of life come, those who, everyone has the storms, whether you're on the rock of Christ or you're on the sand, everybody will have storms. The difference is the house on the sand crashed didn't it? But the house on the rock stood strong, okay? And the, the one on the rock was the one who obeyed the Lord's word and did what he wanted. So to me, the evidence of someone who's with the Lord is how they handle the storms of life. How are you handling the storms of life? Because they will come. I was telling somebody, this year has been a huge, huge uh, tragedy in our family. With the, uh, our, uh, my nephew uh, died in a car accident, head-on collision. Grandma and Grandpa are here, they could tell you. They came for the funeral, were coming back through to go to St. Louis, and they were robbed at gunpoint. And now last week, their house caught on fire and lost everything. How are they handling it? I've seen godly people handle it. This, this, this world is not our home. We're just passing through. If you hang on to the things of this world, you're going to be miserable your whole life. We've got to decide is, is, is our, this, is, this is not our eternity. Yes, we need to live a godly life here, but don't hold on to the things. Listen, we need to be prepared to stand before God we need to be prepared if tragedy hits and one of our family members goes before us. I pray that never happens. But if it does, are you going to crash? Or are you going to stand strong? Is your faith going to be strong? To me, that's the evidence of someone who's filled with the Spirit is they're going to stand strong. Not that they won't grieve. We all grieve. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you will not grieve. I don't, I, you won't cry. You won't have... Things you'll have to you'll have to work through those attitudes, but you'll stand strong in your faith. You'll stand strong. So my my prayer for you is that you'll say, "I want to be right with God, and I want to live right like like Jesus did." The second point is this: the mark of a godly person that they have the Lord in their life is the absence of fear in the presence of peace. It says this, after he had considered this, an angel appeared to him and said in a, in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be what? Afraid. And he said, he talked about the Holy Spirit there. You know that the Holy Spirit, the symbol of the Holy Spirit is always is peace. Like the dove that fell, uh, descended on Christ. Every time an angel would appear, he would always say, hey, don't be afraid. <laughs> the only time you need to be afraid of an angel 
is, is the one that comes, like in Egypt, the death angel, because people would not turn back to God, the death angel, if I'm saying that specifically right. But as followers of Christ, the message is, I came to take away fear. That was probably the, one of the number one things that I struggled with in my, in my life before I followed Christ was fear. I was afraid of the dark, afraid of death. I just had lots of fear. And that's when you focus on the Lord and you know the Lord's with you, the fear leaves. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this at the very end. The third thing is this. The absence um, of anger and the presence of forgiveness. And I want you to see something here. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, which is Joshua, which means salvation, deliverer. And look at these. It gives you the definition there, because he will save his people from their sins. Now, every one of us here have sinned, have we not? Turn to someone and say, yeah, you, you're a big sinner. Can you turn to someone and say, you're a big sinner? Yeah, we are, aren't we? Okay, we all are. That's why we all need a Savior. Because we've all, that's what the grace of God's all about. And so, but if you will understand the name of Jesus is so powerful. Do you know in the book of Acts of, cha- uh, of, of chapter 19, write this down. Go to the book of Acts in, in chapter 19. Um, actually, you don't have to go there, but let me just read this uh, for you. I think I've got it here. I could, I could flip there myself, but it, it talks about in the, the early church, um, they held the name of Jesus in high honor. Um, see, I thought I had it in here. Yeah, here it is. Acts 19, verse 17. It says this, that the name of, the Je- the name of Jesus Christ was held in high honor. It's in Acts 19, uh, 17. The early church, and it actually says, and, ma- and many who believed in Christ came openly confessed their evil deeds, their sins. And that some of them were practicing sorcery, and they took and burnt their stuff that was evil. And thousands of dollars, they said, we don't need this. And it says, the word of the Lord spread rapidly because people got right with God. And so can I tell you something? As you grow closer to the Lord, there's going to be less anger in your heart. You know I know? Because it's happened to me. In fact, uh, my wife and I were talking the other day, and I can't remember, Cheryl, where's my wife at? Is she in here? She's in the nursery. I, I can't remember what happened, but something happened that was, she said, she said uh, 10 years ago, you would have got all upset about that. You would have blown up. I said, yeah. We, we've all grown. Hopefully, we've grown. But the closer you get to God, the less anger you're going to have. And my wife can tell you, I, I, uh, when we got married, uh, because I grew up, God took away a lot of anger, but I still had a lot of things I had to say, God, get rid of this. You don't all of a sudden become perfect. But I just want to tell you, if you, when you understand the grace of God, it'll change your life. In the book of Titus, it says the grace of God teaches you to say no to the worldly passions. And so if you start to understand how gracious God's been to you, and you start to really pray the Lord's Prayer from your heart, you know, early on I'd go to, to Mass and we'd say the Lord's Prayer, and I didn't mean it. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who sin against us. I just say the prayer. But now when I pray that prayer as an example, I have to really say, okay, God, forgive me my sins as I forgive those who sin against me. And when you start to pray that prayer and you really start to forgive people, your life is going to change and anger is going to be gone. And when you start to really pray for the people who have hurt you, you're going to change. <laughs> and when you understand how much grace God's given you, you're, you're going to be so grateful. You're going to be so grateful. Well, the, the next point is this. 
If you really experience God's presence, it's the absence of selfishness and the presence of servanthood. I want you to see something. Joseph woke up and did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. And he went and took Mary as his wife. He had no union with her and until they were married, Scripture says, and they named and he did exactly name the baby Jesus, which is Joshua, save the people from the sins. Names in those days meant a lot. In fact, Anthony was praying about Serenity's name. I wish I'd understand that stood this more when my kids were little. I probably would have named some of my kids different. I don't know, Aubrey and Autumn. Do you? They're here today. But I just didn't really look at the name, the meaning of names. But there's something about. When they named somebody back then, it, it meant something, okay? And, and this, the, the thing I'm saying here is Joseph had to come to the place in his life where he had this dream, and he said, this must be from God. Lord, I, not my will, but yours be done. Because you have to understand, when Joseph took her and people knew she was pregnant, can you imagine in those days, especially all the talk of the people? what it would have been like. And he had to decide to obey God rather than what people said. You have to decide in your life, I'm going to follow God no matter what any, my neighbor says, the guys at work, the gals at work, no matter what anybody else thinks, I'm going to live for the Lord. And I'm going to do the right thing. And so he had to come to that place where we say, Lord, May your will be done, not my will, but yours be done. We say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <laughs> thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we go and do our will. Let's just be honest. We say, do Your will be done. But a lot of times we don't consult him. We say, God, what is your will on this? I believe he did. He's, and he did the right thing. And when you do the right thing, you say, I will serve the Lord. I'm a servant of God. And there's the absence of selfishness. Do you know what the book of James says the most conflicts are from? It, sa it says it indicates the selfish desires that are in our hearts. It says in James, it says that when you have conflicts, fights, and quarreling, it's because one or two people are being selfish. It's my way or the highway kind of thing. So let's move on. The last point. This is the last one. I know we've probably gone a little longer today. I don't even know what time it is. But we're going to conclude here. Oh, we're doing good. I got another hour. No, I just tease it. <laughs> we'll finish up here. The last thing is when you experience the presence of God, there'll be the absence of fear and the presence of joy. Okay, now I want to show you this. Um, this is now in Luke chapter 2. We didn't read this early, so I'm going to read it for you. It says, there will be shepherds living out in the fields. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord sh shone around them. And they were what? Terrified. I think I'd be terrified too, Okay. Look what it says there. But the angel said to them, what did he say? Do not be afraid. Let's say that together. Do not be afraid. Okay? I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all people. Now, I want to stop there. The mark of a person who is really following the Lord, there will be the absence of fear in the presence of joy. That doesn't mean you may not have some fear coming in, but you'll say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you through this tough time, okay? But as you start focusing on the Lord, I tell you, I have had, at times, fear come into my, my heart. A lot of times it's Satan. The Bible says in, in um, Timothy, God did not give us a spirit of fear, of love and sound mind, self-control. He doesn't want us to fear. And so that's what the angel said. Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy will be for all people, he says. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. And it goes on. This will be a sign to you. 
You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in the manger. I'll just read the rest of it here real quick. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. It says, when the angels had left them they'd gone and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened that the Lord has told us about. Wow. A Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. That's amazing to me. My prayer is this morning that you've sensed the peace of God and the presence of God. And you'll know that you don't have to experience this just on Christmas, but understand that God was with you as you walk through life every day of your life. Every day. Storms will come. Be prepared, but is your house built? The scripture uses Christ as a, a foundation, as a rock. We have concrete houses now, but can you imagine one by the ocean on sand? The storms of life will come. My prayer is that you will stand strong. You'll stand strong and you'll know that he is with you. If you've never come to that place where you decided to follow Christ, I want to encourage you to take that and get alone. That's what I did. And I, uh, I started seeking the Lord. He says, if you seek the Lord, you'll find him. If you seek him with all your heart, I guarantee you, you'll find him and you'll start experiencing him. Would you bow your heads this morning? Father in heaven, I thank you so much for each person here. I thank you uh, for your word and how your word is just not like any other book. It's living and active. It speaks to our hearts, and we know in our hearts it's true because it's your word. And I pray a blessing over each person here. I pray that our eyes and our hearts would be open to understanding and seeing and to knowing you. And I pray as we leave from here uh, that uh, we will be changed. And as we walk through life, we will know you're with us and we will look to you and we will pray to you and we will follow you. So I thank you for today. We pray this all in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.